Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You got a big fight coming up today in Mexico between Fernando Montiel, who has lost two of his last four fights, and he's fighting Anki and Cota, who is coming off a two-fight series against Jorge Arce. It's a huge fight in the super bantamweight division. Now, because Montiel is 33 years old and because he's lost two of his last four, many people are wondering whether he still has it. Right? Not only that, the loss to the Nino Denaire was on uh, a premium cable channel. I believe it was HBO. It was a very high profile fight and Montiel got knocked out in that fight and was twitching on the canvas in the second round. Not only did he lose the fight, he lost the fight rather convincingly. The other loss was to a lesser known fighter Victor Terrazas. And in that fight, in the fifth round, Montiel gets hit with a short right hand. He goes down to the canvas. When he gets up, his mouthpiece is popped out, right? It's still in his mouth, but it's popped out and showing. And it's clear that Montiel's bell had been rung. He would go on to lose the decision in that fight. Now, all of that said, and obviously the first uh, Jorge Arce, Anki and Cota fight, which ended in a cut, right? And Cota lost the fight because he couldn't continue due to a cut. Um, that fight was so high octane that it actually spawned the rematch which Arce dominated, and of course, because Arce is a world-class fighter, Arce is a champion. Keep in mind, he had beaten Wilfredo Vasquez, right? People view Ancoda, who at least for one fight hung with Arce, as major competition for Fernando Montiel. I don't think he is. I think Montiel wins this fight. I think the only mistake Montiel has made in his last four fights is by fighting spectacular competition. In fact, it's not a mistake. It's a tribute to him. But understand the two guys he lost to. Excuse me. Nanito Denaire, who we all know, who's on many people's pound for pound list. He's on my pound for pound list at DwyerTop10Boxing.blogspot.com. He's obviously a world-class fighter. Denier has beaten many stellar fighters. I don't think we can reach the conclusion that Montiel is washed up because he, you know, walked into a Denier left hand. But the other fighter, Victor Terrazas, is also an excellent fighter. The only thing Terrazas is missing is exposure. And understand he's a fighter you need to know about. He's also world class. When he gets on the world stage and fights some of the bigger names, I think he's a guy who can pull an upset against almost anyone. Terrazas, first off, is taller than Montiel. He's 5'7". He fights behind a high guard. He's excellent defensively. He has good balance. He moves well. He hits hard enough to have knocked down Montiel and to have something like 18 knockouts on his dossier. He's hard to hit with a jab. No one should look at Montiel's loss to Terrazas and think that it's an indication of decline by Montiel. What it might be is an indication that Terrazas is underrated and should have been taken more seriously before the fight. Now, there's a lot of misinformation in boxing, right? Anki Ancoda, Montiel's opponent, 
for this upcoming fight is wrongly listed on a website I love, boxrec.com. He's wrongly listed as an orthodox fighter. If you look at the tape, you'll see he's actually a southpaw. And what's interesting with him, and you'll see this against Arce, is that he bends at the waist, throws punches at odd angles, is trying to set up a scenario where he's throwing punches and you don't know the angles at which they're coming from. In particular, he has, from a southpaw stance, a looping left hand, right? And what he tries to do is he tries to get low, right? So you're fishing for him. Then he throws that looping left hand trying to take you out on the chin. Now what Arce, who is a champion, figured out is that while normally the folklore is that to beat a southpaw, you throw a straight right hand. What Arce actually figured out is to beat Ancoda you actually want to throw a left hand. And it's interesting because Arce actually starts throwing brutal left hooks to Ancoda's body and Ancoda had no answers, right? I believe Montiel, who fights out of an orthodox stance, is going to have a lot of success because Montiel has power in both hands. Montiel remains, in my opinion, one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in boxing. And like Vitaly Klitschko, it looks like he's throwing arm punches, but he isn't. He has spectacular balance, spectacular balance. And even though he stands upright, I believe he's generating incredible leverage with his lower body, right? Doesn't look like he's leaning into punches. I think that's an optical illusion. I think it's his optical illusion he hits much harder than it seems, right? Because he's 5'4", and because Ancoda is 5'4", I don't believe Ancoda is going to be able to get low enough to upset what Montiel's trying to do. Not only that, Montiel, when he's cooking, is an excellent hooker, right? And hookers, even when you're bent over, Right? They can literally hit you with hard punches. It's the guys who are throwing overhand rights, the headhunters, who have a hard time with, or overhand lefts if you're a southpaw, who have a hard time with guys who can duck under the punch. But a guy who's a hooker like Montiel should be able to deal with the low angle that Ancoda is going to try to set up. I believe that Jorge Arce has shown the blueprint on how to use a left hand to batter Ancoda, right? I believe since Ancoda lost that Arce rematch by a wide margin, and since that fight was televised, I believe that Montiel, a former champion himself, has the resources has the access to watch that film. So he'll see the blueprint on how to beat Ancoda, who I don't believe can fight like Denier or like Victor Terrazas, right? He just doesn't have that skill set. And Ancoda is not that good defensively. Because of the volume of punches he got hit with by Arce, and because Montiel is a much harder puncher than Arce, if you're betting on this fight, I believe you not only want to take Montiel to win the fight, that's your base bet, but you want to sprinkle a kicker, just take a little part of your base bet and put down some on Montiel by KO. He hits that hard. He won't be thrown by the low angle and Coda sets up and he'll be able to deliver power even when Ancoda is crouched low. He'll also know how to get by that looping left hand because Jorge Arce has just done so in two televised fights. I think Montiel remains a player at Super Bantamweight. I'm expecting him to beat Anki Ancoda 
And let me just say, for fans of the division, if you don't know about Victor Terrazas, who beat Montiel in his last fight, you need to do your research because he is also in play in the division. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube and visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.